Welcome, society members. We are excited to invite you to the Inhuman Patreon campaign. It's Black Mass time, right? Um, can't wait to explain a bit more about the CP. So, um, first of all, before we start with the first song, mm, which is not lost, I have to use my, my order here. Um, so, this CP was pretty interesting to make. Um, in EXO, is a pretty old song that I started with Crimson Scar I think two years ago or something. Um, then I think... Thank you for the sub. Zero nay. Thank you, dude. Um, then after that, I think I started Lost, um, which actually... Uh, how long I've been working on it totally? I think really, really long. Um, no idea how much, like, in time, but um, over the time span of two years, I think, Basti. Um, because we never were happy with the second drop. There was a different second drop, which was a lot more machine gun heavy. Um, but I wasn't happy with it. I can actually show you the old version. Let me see. Um... This was the old version. One felony conviction with ten zoos. But I wasn't happy with it. Um, I, 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 I don't know. It just did not feel right, especially with the first drop and everything. And actually, the whole vibe of the song was was different. Like, this was like the intro. Brain Palace is not Nicadino. So it's it's really similar, right? It's it's really similar. But I wasn't happy with the second drop, and and then Nika hit me up from Virus Syndicate and was like, "Dude, let's work on a song." And I was like, "Oh, oh, I'm I'm working on an EP for for a roundtable at the moment. Um, let's just do it. Let's just see where we can go." And then he sent me the vocals for it, and I was like, "Yeah, vocals are dope, but it's not really fitting to to the intro." So I had to write a completely new intro. Um, pretty much one thing I have to say is the sound design in the song is, I think, 80% Crimson Scar at least. Like the, the main sounds, like the main drop thing and everything is Crimson Scar's idea and Brain Palace's idea because Brain Palace is pretty much a part of Crimson Scar if you want. Um, he helps on the production side um, because they are they live pretty close together and they it, it's official. Like they, they work together on, on the Crimson Scar project pretty much. Um, so Crimson Scar himself, like Chris, is is the life part of the project. Produces too, but he's mainly the life part. And Brain Palace, because he does not like to play live shows, is on the production side of the project. That's why it it all makes sense, like in the background, you know. Well, um, Mulot, yeah, it does sound like old stuff because it's old stuff. It's like two years old, you know, and and pretty much both Brain Palace and Crimson Scar learned everything from me. Like 
Brain Palace was sitting next to me for five years straight or something. Um, he was really close to me and, and we, we've been sitting on the PC for years together and he watched me produce. So that's how he learned. And Crimson Sky actually took lessons from me and learned a lot of stuff from Brain Palace. So it makes sense that it kind of sounds like me and my stuff because they adapted a lot of my sound design and ideas, which is completely cool because they create their own shit out of it. And the new stuff is totally different. Like they they stepped up their game like crazy. And and yeah, that's just how it how it works over time. Um basically like Warface. What do you mean? So Second song I started <laughs> was Lost. Mm, actually, let's just listen to the song now when I talked about it. As you can hear, I, I completely changed the intro. The intro is 100% by me. So the drop is a lot of Crimson Scar in there, like Crimson Scar identity, but the intro is 100% me. I'm a human, I'm a mutant. Hey, I'm Peter Cook. I'm an improvement. I'm got to hit level, you're a student. This sick gang digger. And the vocals are so dope. Like, I told him the story from the EP, and he was like, okay, let's fuck shit up. And he just nailed it, right? And a movement, got sick with it. I'm a killer, a pollutant. I'm in it for the squill, and if it gets a nuisance, comes in my game, and a bat to baby, and a bat to zar, and a man, I get a loosen. I don't really have no patience. No, I'm just making patience, saving straight and shoot till the barrel is vacant. Big red stain in the pavement. I've got big dreams, I'm never complacent. Came from the bottom of the basement, blatant. But I don't pet, don't play with pagans. And when I wash them, coming like basins. It's definitely planned, bestie. Bars and that. Who you barking at? My crew bring that fire like arson. No way you ain't part of that. My gang go ham, sir. Your whole fam get with a program shark attack. You don't wanna get me starting that. <laughs> And I think without the choir and everything, this hits so much harder. Like this, this fucking devastates life. And there's this one sound that Crimson Scar or Brain Palace, I don't know, plays this. Like after the first bar, this doo -doo, it gets me crazy. Like when I play shows, I'm, I'm always like, I, I'm fucking raging on stage because this doo -doo is so good. Wait for it. <laughs> it's so good. The sound design in this part is just obnoxious. It's insane. It's so stupid. And the snare is by me. Again, the sound design itself is a lot of Crimson Scar. Like I, I definitely EQ'd, mixed, and and changed a lot of stuff. Um, but in general, like the ideas in this one are from Crimson Scar. And Bestie, it's uh, samples, but I change and layer them a lot. Like I, I basically create them from scratch out of parts from other samples, if that makes sense. See you, Flopper. And the big problem with this part is um, on shitty sound system, you don't hear the bass because it's it's going down like one 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 semitone, um, which makes the part playing in C sharp, and that's a bass frequency that's kinda inaudible on not the best sound systems. Um, in my studio, everything is shaken, but a lot of people don't hear the bass, which is kinda unfortunate. But that's that's what happens when you play like really really low notes. Yeah, Paul, same. I, I don't get it at all. And I, I don't want to be big-headed or anything, but... Yeah, it, it's obviously more interesting than most of the stuff that gets released. Let's, let's be fair. But whatever. I will do my shit and uh, one day people will see it. Maybe it's too much out there for them. So, in this break section, I wanted to adapt the melody from the original song, um, like from, from the first version here, and it worked pretty good. I think it works pretty good. Also, I wanted to change from this uh, really clustered flow here, like the, from, from the dun, dun, ksh. I wanted to change to like a more steady flow, and it worked pretty good. It has like a completely different vibe with the same vocals here, so it stays interesting. I'm in it for 
Appreciate you, Paul. I don't really have no patience. No, I'm just making patience, aiming straight and shoot till the barrel is vacant. Big red shade in the pavement. I've got big dreams, I'm never complacent. Came from the bottom of the basement, blading, but I don't pet, don't play with pagan. If someone I watched the corner like basins, bars and that. Who you see if I work? My crew bring that. Stay hydrated. And here you can hear the choir from the original song. It's crawling back in the background. And I, I kind of like that there's like, even in the production of the song was some kind of story because it started like as this really choir heavy, literal cold Pandoran song, if you want. And then it turned into this, I don't know, it, for me, it feels like this song is was something different that got infected by something. So it really play, even the background of the song plays into the story of the EP. I don't know, maybe I'm I'm just too much into it, but I, I love this shit. <laughs> Who you barking at? My crew bring that fire like arson. No way you ain't part of that. My gang go ham circle your whole fam get with a program shark attack. You don't wanna get me started now. Crimson Skull loves hot style, so I added the hard style melody. <laughs> This hot style synth is provided by the Caster and Inhuman Serum Preset Pack, out now on my Sapphire page. And I love that it ends like this, not gonna lie. <clears throat> Yeah, that's how you end the song, right? Second song I worked on was Lost. And Lost, as well, has a really, really interesting product, pr production history, if you want. So, this song started, I think, also over a year ago. Um, I think it was like the beginning of the Inhuman project, if you want. And it started with a co uh, as a collaboration with Caster and... I, I started an intro, I started the drop, and um, then we had like, I think the first drop was done, I sent it to him. He worked some stuff on the intro, um, and then he was like, yeah, dude, I'm, I'm not feeling the drop 100% because... Um, I'll just speak or is that a new thing for whatever reason? Low compared to previous streams. Um, I, can, I can just turn up the volume. Maybe the volume was down. I'm sorry, Chris. Um, so he was like, yeah, dude, I'm not not feeling the drop that much because it doesn't fit my branding. And um, then I was like, yeah, dude, um, is it cool if I finish it? Because it fits my branding really, really well. And it's it really much proves my, my new direction I want to go when it comes to dubstep, like a lot deeper, a lot more focused on, on good flows and sound design and still heavy, but just more me, you know? And, and he was like, yeah, dude, it's fine, you can even leave my stuff in. Um, but I was like, yeah, nah, that wouldn't feel right. So I deleted his stuff from the intro. The intro sounded different for a while. Uh, I can I can show you that as well. Maybe it was this one. Yeah, th this was the intro for a while. And that's that's the part Caster made. And I think it's pretty fucking dope, but I didn't want to include it in the, in the final song. Because obviously it's not a call-up anymore and I wanted to delete it. Because it's, yeah. And I think the drop is the same here. Yeah, but this this little drop like intro intro drop trap thing was from Caster and I deleted that. So, yeah, let's get into Lost. Definitely one of my favorite dubstep songs I've made yet. Love the eeriness in the intro. Pretty much if you want this song 
kind of is about this guy. Like that's that's the feeling I get when when this guy was created in my head pretty much. To to explain the story um of the black mass a bit more. Um this guy is someone who is who was infested by the black mass and they have to wear these coats and shit. Um um to to not infect anyone else but the problem is that your mind gets twisted by this shit obviously and it wants you to kind of control it if you want or it wants to control you you can you can make out of it whatever you want and pretty much they they think they can gain powers with it um but most of the time it's just basically eating them from the inside out and that's why he's like he's like reading these scripts about the black mass and what it could be and blah 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 um if it's something religious or not yada 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 um and the the black mass is tripping out of this this fucking book and obviously it's not a coincidence that black mass is like a satanic ritual but also mass is some some kind of mass something that spreads um that was the idea behind it. So there's like an actual black mass, even though in in our world it's like a satanic ritual, but in that world it's just like this black liquid that basically eats everything. Uh, the vocal sample is, uh, I think, recorded by me from someone. I don't remember. <laughs> it's it's pretty old. The sample. Yo, Schmel. Get somewhere there. Yeah, and I like the visuals they did, not gonna lie. And they, I, I sent them some references for the artwork and they just nailed it. Like, it's a bit too colorful for me, but I think it's fine and we did not have too much time to plan it, but I love the direction of the artwork. So, and, and this is one of the songs where everything has a meaning. Um, even the snare has a meaning. Um, because pretty much this whole EP is playing before the Inhuman timeline. It's pretty much the part where the world shifts like from these old rituals and shit. If you want, you can say it, it switches from the Code Pandorum world, like the, the old ancient satanic evil stuff. Um, to the futuristic direction and this ties the projects together if you want there definitely is a connection it's pretty far away it doesn't matter if they are connected or not but there definitely is a connection for these projects <laughs> Thank you, Bestie. See ya, man. So this drop... I love this drop. I fucking love the rhythm of this drop, the sound itself of this drop, the fucking Reese that plays this rim, 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 rim. It just gets me. Like, th this is literally the music I would listen to, and I'm so fucking proud that I'm creating this stuff. And I mean, I, I am probably my co audience. So. <laughs> Uh, Jabbery, uh, first of all, hey, cool that you're here. Um, it's pretty, pretty sharp side chaining, um, but mainly the snare is extremely loud before it goes into the master. So the snare is pretty much clipping like crazy, the song isn't, and the master is gluing everything together. And that's why the snare is that present. And this switch here, this switcher kind of shows that that the song 
So, I, I don't know, maybe I'm, I'm just bragging too much about myself. If that's the case, I'm sorry, I don't want to sound like a dick, but I love how the song really starts sounding like something ancient. Like, it, it sounds really wooden, old, just like these dum -dum -dum machine guns and really, really... Yeah, wooden is a good word. And it slowly transitions into more futuristic, more detailed, more complex rhythms, more weird sounds, more outer space sounds, if you want. And I I just love how this connects everything together. And at the end, it just turns into a completely different genre. So the whole song is just a ride through the transition, if you want. This song is pretty much showing the transition of the Inhuman, uh, of the Code Pandorum project to the Inhuman project. And I, I, I just really fucking love that. Like it, it improves from, it, it just turns from a really, really basic structure into something really, really complex and then basically turns into a completely different genre and, and time span. And it's, I don't know, to me, this, this song just feels really, really cohesive and good. And also this uh, somewhere there we go lost has a lot of meaning to me because honestly when I'm when I'm diving into this inhuman world and into the world concept and stuff it really feels like I'm I'm getting lost in my in my brain sometimes like in my thoughts and shit and I I pretty much could talk hours and hours and hours about this project um yeah, it has a lot of meaning. Like this song especially has a lot of meaning for me and for the project. So I'm really glad that all of you appreciated that much as well. Thank you guys so much really appreciate your comments and your thoughts and all um it, it really means a lot to me thank you serenity yeah it's it's pretty much meant to be an ep ending and kind of an end of an era if you want um to me this ep really feels like a farewell and as i said the connecting piece between between the two projects and that just feels really good for me to to have this ep out um i think the next song i started was actually black mass um and it honestly with this song it, it's like a weird relationship i have so the thing is i started this song um and i had inner gate from um crimson child and summons in, in my head and i wanted to create something something like that because i love the original song and then i started and it turned into this really rhythmy kind of trap influenced thing and i had the first drop done and i showed the drop my now wife um 
And she was like, yeah, it's cool and all, but I'm, I don't know. And then next time I, I stepped into the car, she was like, yeah, can you put Black Mass on again? I was like, she did not like the song. Yeah, I don't know. I want to, I kind of want to check it again. And I had an updated version of this. Like um, the, the outro, like the last drop wasn't done, but first drop and Mitro were done. And then she was like, I don't know. This song is growing on me like crazy. And I had like a similar feeling. Like when I made the song, I was like, yeah, it's cool. It has like a lot of weird sound, weird sound, de sound design decisions and shit. Um, but I, I, it, it kind of grew on me over time. And then first time I played it live, it was in Budapest on Next Level Events. And it was my first Inhuman show in Budapest and I played the song and I played the Metro section and then obviously the transition into the second drop and the crowd fucking annihilated everything. Like, I, I'm not sure if I ever got like a similar reaction on a song like this. And I was like, damn, this song is pretty cool. <laughs> like, I, I start to like it a lot. And then I listen to it more and more often. And then it, it, I don't know, it just turned into this puzzle piece of this EP that put this EP together somehow. And that's why it's the title song. And obviously, Black Mass is a big thing in the universe that I'm creating. Blah, 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 blah. Um, so, yeah. Black ass. Said in some instances for the most hideous reasons. Although it has also been defended as a beautiful and respectful ceremony. Ignorance of such rituals can lead to dangerous and far-reaching psychological effects. The Black Mass. And the ridiculous vocal is so good. I, I love the sound design on this sound, it's fucked. It sounds so squashed, like... <laughs> Uh, the vocal sample is from a from a vinyl, um, from like an actual satanic ritual recording, I think. And not gonna lie, foreign. Um, you hear these like on on the four fourth notes, like the reading, reading. It's extremely inspired by your stuff, dude. Deadly. Not gonna lie. Deadly. Deadly. This now. Amplitude, thank you so much. Same here, I think. <laughs> thank you, Paul. Yeah, I love that shit. <laughs> it's like, I, I don't get why, why people make so many boring things in dubstep. Like, you can, you can make so much interesting stuff.
Like, not even the dubstep, like in electronic music in general. And I will fucking keep doing that until people see that. <laughs> Oh, you would say this is trap amplitude? I'm really not sure what genre this shit is. Or similar ceremonies. And this midsection, I really like this midsection. Extre uh, section, extremely inspired by uh, Tice from Noisia. Has been in existence since man first conceived the idea of good and evil. evil, 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 evil. <laughs> Foreign, yeah. Yeah, I get that amplitude, yeah. Um, I, I love trap, so that makes sense. <laughs> In a circle twerking. Although it has also been defended as a dutiful and respectful ceremony. Ignorance of such rituals can lead to dangerous and far-reaching psychological effects. The Black Man. And it's such a minimalistic intro, and I think that's why the drop hits that hard, I'm not sure. It's the highest, most holy ritual, said as a glorification of the god of darkness. The Black Mass. Uh, Moonlord, I think it was from the same vinyl recording. There was like a like a choir thing playing and I slapped that into a sampler and just looped it and OTT'd the shit out of it, I think. Yeah, the visuals turned out pretty damn good. Way better than I expected. Thank you, Jabbery. Yeah, and in this part, I just wanted to crush everything. There's so much distortion on this. Thank you, Moonlord. I appreciate that. Yeah, I, I love how this turned out and how it sums up the vibe of the EP and it, ju it just connects everything somehow. Um, really, really, really enjoyed the song myself. Um, the next thing that started was Lawless, I think. Um, and actually, I have to give kudos to Batfella again because this idea was him. And he sent me the idea of the song and I was like, dude, I, I need to work on the song as well. Like, this is insane. This is fucking stupid. And I absolutely like it and I want to do a song like this with you. And he sent me the stamps and I added my stuff, added my drums, uh, made the mix down and final arrangement and shit. And I think it turned out incredible. I really like this. It may be not 100% fitting to the EP, but I, I thought, yeah, I mean, if if there's like a like a like a pest going on, like a like a black mass thing going on, and people fucking get lawless and rob other people and shit, so it it kind of fits the vibe. We had this title before the idea of the EP, so it it kind of fits just title wise. Maybe not one hundred percent song wise because it has like cop sirens and shit. It's it's like more typically EDM vibe ish compared to the other stuff, but I think just, just for the story it kind of works, you know? 